Hi everyone, I'm Professor Sally Eve, CEO of Aspirational Futures. And it's my pleasure to host this fireside chat special with Miguel Valdez Fora, who is CEO and co-founder at Bonitasoft, a leading global provider of open source business process management and digital process automation. Welcome to the show, Miguel. Thank you very much, Sally. A pleasure. Oh, thank you. Lovely to see you again. So, Miguel, I always love to know a little bit more about the person behind the technology and also how that is reflected in company values as well. And I understand you started your career as a developer. Now, obviously, you're CEO of this globally leading profitable company where open source is very much embedded and very much heart of the DNA. I love your description of that. So how has this open source DNA been reflected at Bonitasoft, what it stands for and also the software you're producing too? Yeah, good question, Sally. So actually, um, you know, there are uh, some core values that comes with uh, open source and that developers use uh, to develop software uh, under the open source uh, DNA, which some of some examples will be transparency, excellence, uh, meritocracy, in a way how you admire the code that somebody else is producing, collaboration, especially when you're working uh, uh, multiple teams um, uh, on one particular software. We try to leverage those ones and other values and apply them uh, to the company and how we run Bonita Soft on a, on a, on a single day. Uh, so let me give you two examples. Uh, one example will be transparency applied to how running a company that is leveraging open source. Uh, everything that we produce, all the content, documentation, resources, white papers, even the product are available for free to download. Uh, we don't even ask uh, um, uh, potential leads to share with us the contact information. So what we want is like people um, basically adopt the technology at their own pace and only contact us when they are ready. Another example that will be more on uh, excellence uh, value applied to running a company will be our sales methodology. We are using a methodology that we call customer-centric selling, in which what is important to us is to identify a pain that a potential customer may have and try to see if with the product and our services, we can uh, bring uh, the accurate value. If we think that uh, we are not providing enough value, we prefer to say no go rather than having a non-satisfied customer, rather than potentially churn a customer uh, after uh, one year renewal. No? So uh, those are two examples. We have many others. For example, we run the company, making sure that we our business is sustainable. So we do as maximum growth as possible while being profitable. So those are three examples and how we apply that uh, on a day-to-day basis. I love that. So kind of three pillars I was hearing there in terms of democratization of that access, I think is hugely, hugely important. Um, I love the pillar of sustainability. I'm at COP26 at the moment. So that's fantastic to hear. I absolutely love that. Um, but also just that that empowerment across all levels of the organization as well. That was really coming across strongly. Fantastic. And kind of going back to your developer roots as well. So you've pointed out that that's where you started from as well. And, and from that background, a bit like myself, actually, very, very technical in orientation in those development teams. And now as an executive, you'd love to be a citizen developer. I'd love to hear about more about that, you know, how that experience is reflected in the way the Bonita platform has been targeted at both professional and citizen developers. It's actually particularly handy, especially in our market. So uh, uh, we are evolving in the process automation market, which is a market that is also embracing the low-code approach. So a lot of our customers are expecting to use a solution that can be used not only by developers, but also by what the market calls citizen developers, as you know, so people that have, uh, don't have necessarily those skills. Uh, so at some point, uh, people are expecting from us a solution that can um, be suitable for the two personas, developers, and um, or professional developers, citizen developers. So having an experience on those two worlds uh, uh, is really helpful. Um, and it's I'm not the only one in the company uh, that uh, that also um, has went from one to the other. So um, it's uh, it's important for us to make sure that we, we do the right certification and we propose a solution that uh, is suitable for uh, different different people depending on their skills. No? That's fantastic. I love that amber dexterity to, to cater for both. I think that's brilliant. And in your own words, again, I've heard you speak about an authentic approach to low code. So what does that mean for you in practice? And what's the key differences there? So it's it's related to what we were discussing about the collaboration potentially between the two worlds. Um, you know, from my perspective, perspective in our market, every, every time that we hear low code, uh, usually uh, that means uh, trying to uh, make sure that business people or non-technical people can be part of the development process. And that's nice. And I think that's, of course, we are hitting that more and more. Um, and that's important. And we also focus on that. But at Bonitasoft, um, we try to make sure that developers are also part of the low-code approach. So we try to make sure that developers 
uh, are not put aside uh, and that also uh, are going to be using low-code uh, technologies. So that's our number one priority, which I think is make us unique um, um, in our market, while our competitors are more focused on serving only business personas. And second thing, we are really, in particular, interested on making that collaboration happen. You know? So, okay, yeah, it's good to be, make sure developers are involved in low-code development, uh, but also that they can collaborate with business people. You know? So uh, the way we managed to do it is um, uh, by making a clear separation between what we call visual capabilities or visual programming. So everything that can be done um, by clicking and basically not don't require uh, any uh, professional development skills versus the, the, the point in time in which you need to code. No, So we have clearly separated um, the, the capabilities in which you need to uh, code versus the other one that everything can be graphical. And it's all our internal magic to make sure that when a developer is involved and uh, something is developed, that can be bring back to the to the to the platform, uh, ensuring uh, governance and maintainability. So Miguel, I'd love to explore some examples to really show and bring the Bonita platform to life, and particularly how it's extensible. So what does that really mean in practice? If I'm a developer, you know, starting a project tomorrow, what would that look and feel like on Bonita? So extensibility is the mechanism that allows um, uh, developers to jump in and add their own magic. Uh, and so uh, we have defined it with Bonita more than 20 different extension points um, at different levels to allow that to happen. Uh, and so let me let's illustrate that with um, um, you know an, um, a banking application. No? I'm a major bank and developing a new service, let's say an onboarding service uh, to allow uh, new customers um, to get in or. or or we can apply the same thing to, I don't know, loan management and existing applications. In that particular example, um, we're going to develop the processes, we're going to develop the UIs, we're going to interact with different systems to create the, the, the application and the, um, this final solution. And uh, let's uh, uh, imagine that uh, at some point we need to collect some data that is coming from a legacy system. Uh, there's a lot of legacy applications still in, in banks. And for that particular um, legacy system, there is no API or there is no uh, uh, out-of-the-box uh, connector, no? So a developer can jump in and just uh, implement an interface that has been uh, provided by Bonita. And so uh, add their own custom code to do with all the testing, continuous integration, and then um, develop that, that interoperability uh, and then put it back into the solution, no? That particular connector can be then reused in other apps if needed. So that will be an example of how we can uh, easily add the new custom connector to an existing uh, solution. Other examples of uh, extension points would be, let's imagine on the authentication side of the story, that application is going to be put into production and we want to configure uh, a custom service, single sign-on service that is uh, the bank is using for all the applications. So uh, that could be another extension point. Other examples would be um, some UI component is missing in the final uh, UI. We allow a developer using JavaScript to develop that missing component, no? So uh, uh, those are some examples of how developers with different skills can extend the platform, uh, use their own tool to develop, and then put it back into the Bonita. That's brilliant. I lo like I say, I love examples. I think you really brought that to life there. That's superb. So, Miguel, thank you so much. I think a final wrap-up from me is how really Bonita Soft is enabling this collaboration between both professional and citizen developers. I love the commitment to open source. I think that's fantastic and really kind of orchestrating interactions, I'd say, across human system and robot as well with this extensible and embeddable open source. So thank you, Miguel. Thank you for joining us today. It's been a great discussion. Thank you for the time. Uh, pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you.